My eyes fool me. Or does it say gushing over magical girl fans just got good news? Let's check it out. Certainly not the same amount of views as yesterday's Rama One Half video that came out with its announcement from Studio Mappa, but even then. Damn, that's just hitting for 35.8 now. During the time of recording the video, it was at like 25. Shit, pretty much went another like 10 plus mil. But even then, 4.2 million views yeah. on a very vague announcement for gushing over magical girls definitely showcases the amount yeah. of fans that this series has garnered in the last year or so since season one came out. I, I I don't feel like I'm really pushing this or really exaggerating when I say that, yeah, maybe Gushing Over Magical Girls did have somewhat of a fan base, but I- I think it has more than a fan base. I think that all the Coomers and the Degenerates that were waiting for like a proper etchy show with like a decent plot were finally given what they got. And you know what? Of course, yes, there is a ridiculous amount of fan base and I would be ashamed to like say that I watched this show. I would not publicly announce to other people that I know in real life that I watched this shit, but if you can't get over the fan service, the story is actually pretty unique in like, you know, the good girls and the bad girls and what, you know, the, uh, the, you know, their mascot, you know, what's, what's his name? Neva? I forget. But there, there's like a huge plot mystery going on with this, you know, the source of magical girls and stuff. So it's a decent watch for sure. I do think that it was probably very niche and very small until the anime came out and brought a lot of publicity to yeah. the series. And just seeing 4.2 million views on a post, 40k likes, and then, you know, 13k, you know, retweets, and that's yeah. not including other posts. We probably should not. How many of you guys saw elusive samurai tweets going crazy from Japanese people? In the same uh, example... Probably shouldn't, you know, translate these tweets down here if you want to be safe. Post, etc. People either retweeting, etc. from different accounts. It really just goes to show that uh, there is a lot of love for yeah. gushing over magic girls, even when there is just vague information that comes out earlier this morning. So let's dive headfirst into that. So basically, you had the main official, you know, gushing over magical girls actual Twitter account make a few posts this morning, basically with something like this, saying like TV anime, they had a date and all that. And then they had, you know, this here where they were basically saying that yeah. uh, there was going to be an announcement like on October, like in the middle of October and stuff, and they're hyping it up. With VAs and all that. Hmm. Uh, they're gonna have an announcement with the VAs in October, meaning obviously, you know, October is the last season for anime of 2024, which is fall 2024. So we could have gushing back as early as January 2025. What do you think? Like winter 2025, maybe? And basically, this led a lot of people to believe that there is going to be an anime announcement for Season 2. Now, at this point in time, there is no confirmation that Season 2 is technically coming. I, I, I want to make sure that is clarified. But, with these just, like, these announcements, like, for instance, just, like, this little teaser here and there, and just the reception that Gushing Over Magical Girls got for its Season 1, I'm led to believe that this is most likely going to be a Season 2 announcement. Mm -hmm. Even if they might not give us, like... I hope it's pro you know how solo leveling does it it's like they don't give you a date but it's like it's in production and then later then they give you an actual date but then again you have Mappa just being like yeah Rama reboot that should drop in like in two months good, for, good have fun so I wonder what's gonna happen if we're gonna have like it's finally in production or it's like nah winter 2025 maybe be a bit too early but if they are prepared, like, I could see as early as winter 2025. If not, then sometime in 2025. Let's say a date. Like, they might not say, oh, it's going to air in 2024 or, 20, you know, 2025. I feel like they'll at the very least say, yeah, Gushing Over Magical Girls Season 2 in production. I could definitely see an announcement alongside of that to make sure the fans know that. By the way, what studio does Gushing Over Magical Girls? Does anyone know? There is going to be a continuation at some point. And, I mean, I, I feel like it's... I guess, common sense that there would be a season two. Like I said, it was just it's so popular. And just when you look at the BD DVD cells that it got, and obviously BD DVD cells. <laughs> Wonder why people would buy BD DVD sales for Gushing for Magical Girls. Oh, I know. Because they, quote unquote, censored a lot of the things, right? You thought that Gushing for Magical Girls, the anime, was fan servicey. With these kind of etchy anime, the whole incentive to buy the DVDs are even higher because they're just going to show like everything and more and i think there's even not even just visuals but there's audios clipped out obviously there's some extreme moaning and shit like that that was not included in some scenes i remember watching the anime episodes some scenes it was just background music and no voice acting i'm like hold up 
I feel like something should be making a sound right now, but they obviously don't want to do that in the anime. They don't want to give you everything so that it gives you an incentive to buy the DVD so that you can hear all the moaning there. Don't, like, mean everything. There's just so much more to the market in the anime and manga industry than just BD DVD sales. But it's like, the BD DVD sales were doing really good. Like, yeah. it was absolutely insane for its time period. And factoring all that in, you know, obviously the big head honchos at the top, the CEOs, the production committee and all that, they probably took a look look at the you know the figures the cells etc and they're like yeah we need to we need to get a season two pronto mm -hmm. i feel like maybe when they were making season one or at least the staff was making season one they probably maybe a plan just to do a season one that like one and done and that's it and then probably thanks to the popularity now they're able to probably announce a season two that's my assumption on things and that's what the october announcement's actually going to be about now i think that makes a lot of sense and it genuinely blew my mind i know that Viewership for YouTube anime reactions is not the same as a global audience that actually shows how much interest there is in a series, but gushing it was crazy. Like the numbers I was getting back then and the numbers that other creators also just across the board, gushing is just crazy. And if you think about it, like why? Well, I think Etchy Show just everybody loves that shit, right? Sex sells, obviously, but on top of that, it actually had a decent story as well. So it was definitely one of the most like successful series that I've ever had on my YouTube channel and for a lot of channels as well. It's a very shameless grind <laughs> shameful grind or a shameless grind i'm just doing it for the numbers guys per honestly you wouldn't you probably won't you probably won't believe me if i was not doing anime reactions on youtube i probably wouldn't have watched gushing for magical girls but having said that after watching it it was a decent watch i give it like a minimum seven out of ten now, with that being said, though, I do want to take a few moments to really temper people's expectations, okay? As much okay. as I'm about 90% certain that this is going to be an anime announcement for Season 2, I do want to remind people, literally just a month ago, okay? Yeah. Less than a month ago at this point, there was an announcement for Tokyo Ghoul, and it was being hyped oh? up by official accounts, etc. Oh? For literally a month. And, you know, a lot of people, including myself, believed that there was a potential possibility for a Tokyo Ghoul anime remake, like the Brotherhood treatment. And when you looked at, you know, the the actual audience and just how many people were talking about it, it was very clear that there was definitely people that want that to happen, a remake of the anime. And with just an era of nothing but remakes coming out, like, I mean, the Ranma post I was just showing earlier. I don't know how I feel about these remakes. I, I think that anime remakes are, on average, better than, like, Hollywood remakes, right? Because, like, what's going on in Hollywood right now with, like, AAA blockbuster fucking movies? It's all just remakes of old shows, and sometimes there's a lot of wokeness going on on DEI that causes it to be even worse than what they're trying to do. And everyone just gets mad. And these remakes are just, like, a culture war to, I don't know, farm the negative engagement from doing shit like that. I mean... Even recently, how, how, how many have seen the fucking memes with Romeo and Juliet? It, it's such a... There's so much negative energy surrounding all these remakes. But for anime, though, I think the anime remakes has been pretty good so far, right? I, I, I know that Code Kiss is not a remake. Uh, there's a Rama remake for sure. Legend of the Galactic Heroes remake. There's a bunch of other remakes. One Piece remake. That's something that I'm really interested in. And it'd be nice if Tokyo Ghoul also got a remake. In a different way for me, because right now in the YouTube reaction space, Tokyo Ghoul is a bit uh, of a gray spot because the copyright owners are called uh, Mulby and they are one of the most notorious to fucking strike shit down even though they never escalate to court. So a lot of people like Neil Desai, for example, is watching Co uh, Tokyo Ghoul. I'm sure most of you are aware of like all the bullshit that he has to go through, right? So it's kind of like locked out. But it'd be nice if, you know, a different copyright owner that wasn't so fucking anal about this shit would, you know, handle Tokyo Ghoul remake. That's like a completely separate reason, though, for what I want compared to what, you know, the fast audience wants. Making perfect sense. Like, literally, it's been like three decades since there's been any form of new content for Ranma One Half. It's just like, yeah, there is a new age, a new era of anime getting remade. And so a lot of people believe that, you know, Tokyo Ghoul and the cards of a remake is definitely a possibility. So it makes a lot of sense why there was a lot of attention around that. But the thing is, is when the announcement Baited. finally arrived and they had all this countdowns, etc., come to find it? out that it was just an art, uh, you know, exhibit. That that's all it was. And <laughs> that's like clickbaiting on YouTube. It's the same shit. It's like someone makes a video of like I'm quitting, <laughs> or like this is the end. <laughs> and you click onto the video and it's like, well, actually, it wasn't about that. And people are like, what the fuck? Didn't they do this shit with ReZero 3 and 3 last year? I think that there was some, uh, some sort of uh, exhibit, some kind of meeting to uh, have ReZero announcements. 
And instead of ReZero Season 3 being confirmed, what happened instead was Yojo Senko or something was like, Yeah! White Fox is making this anime now! ReZero, I, I don't know, but this shit's like two core non-split! And it's just like, oh my fucking god, baited. And obviously, a lot of people got extremely disappointed, including myself. Yeah, Sengoku Yoko, that's the one. I didn't make a video on it because I was just, I was so disappointed because it's like, I cannot believe official companies, etc. would hype up this big countdown and announcement. Mm. for a full month just mm. for it to be an art exhibit it's like they knew what of course you're surprised they were farming absolutely how do you increase the sales of the art exhibit you need a lot of engagement on it how do you build up hype for engagement do you <laughs> fucking bait them into thinking tokyo ghoul remake is gonna happen and once all the eyes are there at the end everyone's gonna be disappointed yes but at the end of the day that's probably gonna do better numbers in, in this scenario where they didn't you know bait like that what they were doing they, they knew they were baiting the anime fans yep. but they did that anyways and it's intentionally kinda, it's a little bit gross i mean this isn't the first time stuff like that's happened i know that there's been like announcements of, like pachinko machines that they've done countdowns for etc so like factoring all that in it's just like yeah it, it, it happens so i do want to make sure it, it's very clear that you know there is a possibility even if it's not like a large chance there is at least a 10 percent in my head that this could just be a game announcement or Maybe. a gotcha game announcement it could be Oh man, gushing over magical girls gotcha. That's a good idea. Yo, that shit would do numbers. I'd be down for that. Be just uh maybe an art exhibit, I doubt that. But I mean it could be a bunch of different things. So I do want to make sure I say that before I go any further. But with that, I will say that I am pretty much certain though this is a continuation because I feel like with just like the overwhelming popularity of gushing had mm -hmm. in the cells and everything, it's just it's a no-brainer. It feels like it's a complete no-brainer because obviously with just like, you know, it being one of those rare cases of an etchy anime actually being etchy and having full uncensored content, etc. Obviously this is a you know, a cash cow for the people that work on it. Absolutely. And I feel like the, the production committee definitely sees that. It's like, oh, we can sell probably a bunch of figures for this series we could sell a bunch of merchandise we could sell more content plushies etc what kind of merch are they selling for gushing for magical girls are they selling like whips like ball gags <laughs> like bondage gear? you think they would do that because like other than figurines right because like the theme of this show is like bdsm shit i wonder if they would it's one of those series that could definitely be sold a lot because of just the content yeah. that it is. You know, I mean, not just the fan service content, but it's also Magical Girls as well. And that really sells, too. So it's just like factoring all that in. Yeah, season two is pretty much certain at this point. But yeah, I wanted to relay this information to people because Thank it's like you. I know there's a lot of people that watch my channel that absolutely adore gushing over Magical Girls. Same. I understand that. I love the series too. And so I wanted to let people know that there is potential hope for a um, season two. Season two soon. So yeah, I'll let you all know. And more. Y'all know what to do. Go give Chibi a like, sub to his channel if you haven't. And yeah, it's, it's looking like most likely, right? Season two announcement's going to happen in October. Now, whether or not it's in production or at a specific date, who knows? It could be as early as, you know, January 2025, winter 2025, right? Because right now we're in summer and then we got fall that starts in October. If this exhibit or whatever announcement is in October, then it just makes sense that it would be as early as January. But hey, fingers crossed, maintain your expectations. And by then we should be out of horny jail and we should be able to cover it on YouTube. Bye-bye.